From a crab with fur-like pincers lurking in the scalding depths, to glowing jellyfish and worms that survive in the harshest conditions on Earth, the Midnight Zone is home to some of the ocean's most bizarre creatures. These are terrifying deep sea creatures discovered in the Midnight Zone. The Yeti Crab was first discovered in 2005 in the South Pacific Ocean, deep around hydrothermal vents near New Zealand. What makes it so strange is that its claws are covered in a sort of fuzzy hair, but it's not actually hair, it's bacteria. Scientists think the bacteria might help process the sulfur in the water, which is an important nutrient for the crab, but it's hard to say for sure. The fact that they survive in one of the harshest ecosystems known to science is pretty cool though. The crab's habitat is one of the most extreme environments on Earth, with scalding temperatures, high pressure, but the Yeti crab thrives in it, and it kind of looks like an animal that fits right at home in an environment like this. It's pale and ghostly with spindly legs, which gives it a sort of haunting look, and it's not hard to see how it gets its name, of course. The strange fuzzy appearance and the white color makes it sort of look like the mythical furry Himalayan Yeti. The deep sea spider crab crab lives at depths where sunlight never reaches, and thank god for that, cause just look at this thing. These are slow moving scavengers with long, long legs that can stretch over 3 feet, and while that's not exactly giant by deep sea standards, it's pretty big for something as freaky looking as this. Its long limbs make it look otherworldly, and it kinda does live in another world. They're usually found on the sea floor scavenging for dead animals or whatever else they can find. What really sets these guys apart from the other deep sea crabs is those legs, which are disproportionately long compared to the rest of their body, which you probably don't need me to tell you. Their body looks about the size of a large hamburger, but their legs are massive. They look like they belong to a completely different animal. It's hard to tell if these long legs are for efficiency and getting around, or if they just look that way because of the extreme pressure and low food availability this deep down. It just makes their bodies all all weird. I don't know. These things aren't really aggressive, but they definitely look freaky. Thankfully, the vampire squid doesn't suck BL double O D, but it's certainly got a name that brings up some pretty creepy images. It's a small cephalopod that lives in the oxygen deprived waters of the deep ocean, about 250 to 2500 feet down. The vampire squid gets its name from its dark, velvety body and red eyes, which make it look like, well, a vampire squid. They look kind of intimidating. They're not as scary as they seem. It doesn't actively hunt for other animals. Instead, it survives by feeding on plankton and marine detritus, which is the decaying organic material like dead plants and animals that sink down to the ocean floor. One of the most interesting things about it is that unlike other squid species, it doesn't expel ink as a defense mechanism. Instead, it releases this bioluminescent mucus to confuse predators. The deep sea hatchet fish is a small flat fish that lives deep, deep down in the ocean, around 200 to 1,000 meters or 650 to 3,280 feet down. Its body is laterally compressed and shaped like a hatchet, which is of course where it gets its name. The body shape, combined with the fact that it's bioluminescent, helps it blend in with the faint light from above. Hatchet fish have large eyes designed to capture even the smallest amount of light from above, and they use their glowing undersides to make themselves harder to spot from below. The hatchet fish is another one of those creatures that on its own isn't that terrifying. They're very small, they pose zero threat to humans, but they have a kind of unsettling appearance. It's something about their downturned mouths and their semi-translucent looking bodies. They look a bit like tormented ghosts. And in its natural habitat, it's a master of staying out of sight while lurking in the depths. It's just a really cool creature. The black dragonfish is an almost mythical looking deep sea predator, or like something that would pop out of your chest in the far reaches of space. It has long, sharp teeth, a bioluminescent barbell hanging from its chin, and this sleek black body designed to blend into the darkness of the sea. These things just look mean. Found at depths of about 200 to 2,000 meters, or 650 to 6,000 
50 feet, it's a vicious hunter that uses its glowing barbell to lure in prey. They're ambush predators, taking advantage of the pitch black environment to surprise their victims. Yes, the glowing orb is very noticeable, but the stupid fish don't notice the horrific monster attached to it. The black dragonfish doesn't just look scary, its teeth are sharp and curved backward, making it easier to trap prey once they're close enough. The deep sea cusk eel is a long, thin, snake-like fish that lives in the deep, dark parts of the ocean, usually between 3,280 and 9,840 feet. With its eel-like body, it looks more like a giant worm than your typical fish, and it's got small fins that don't seem to serve much purpose. These fish don't swim around around much. Instead, they tend to sort of crawl along the ocean floor, using their long bodies to slither through the mud and sand in search of food. The cusk eel is what you'd call an opportunistic feeder. It doesn't hunt actively, but will scavenge for whatever it can find, including dead animals or leftover bits of prey from other predators. They can survive in extreme conditions, and by that I mean they can go for long periods without food. This is important because food sources in the deep ocean are scarce, so the cusk eel's ability to go without eating for a while is key to its survival, especially because it doesn't really hunt. The hydrothermal vent worm is a remarkable creature found around hydrothermal vents, which are underwater geysers that release superheated mineral-rich water from the Earth's crusts. These vents are one of the most extreme environments on the planet, with temperatures that can soar above 350 degrees Fahrenheit or about 175 degrees Celsius. And the Hydrothermal vent worm just loves this environment. What's truly fascinating about these worms is that they don't have mouths or digestive systems, meaning they don't eat food the way most animals do. Instead, they rely on bacteria that live inside their bodies. These bacteria consume the chemicals spewed by the vents, like hydrogen sulfide, and then convert them into energy through a process called chemosynthesis. This allows the worm to survive without eating anything in the traditional sense anyway. The worms themselves are long, bright red tubes that stick out of the ocean floor, often clustered around the vents. The red coloration is thanks to hemoglobin, which helps them transport oxygen and the low oxygen waters around the vents. Hydrothermal vent worms are just a perfect example of how life can adapt to some of the most extreme conditions on Earth. The bioluminescent jellyfish is one of the most well-known creatures of the deep sea, and it's easy to see why. Just look at them. This jellyfish has a protein called GFB, green fluorescent protein inside its body that allows it to emit a glow, often described as an eerie or ghostly light. It uses bioluminescence in a variety of ways. It can attract prey, communicate with other jellyfish, and confuse predators. See, the glow can be used to disorient creatures that might otherwise try to eat it, allowing the jellyfish to then escape. GFP has been so fascinating to scientists that it's now used a lot in research. It's helped develop a number of scientific tools from tracing proteins in other organisms to improving medical imaging. Now, while this jellyfish isn't dangerous to humans, its glow in the dark depths of the ocean is nothing short of mesmerizing. And its slow, graceful movements combined with that creates this kind of surreal, haunting image, making it one of the most iconic deep sea creatures in the world. Lanternfish are small deep sea fish. They're some of the most abundant animals in the deep ocean. Found in the midnight zone, they can grow up to about 20 centimeters long, which of course isn't all that impressive, but it's their glowing bioluminescent bodies that make them look so darn cool. Now this may seem like a pretty dumb ability for such a small defenseless creature to have in the deep dark depths of the ocean, but the bioluminescence is actually used for camouflage, helping them blend into the faint light from the surface when viewed from below. It makes it harder for predators to spot them. It's also a way for them to communicate or attract mates. Lanternfish are an important part of the food chain. They feed on plankton, and they're also a food source for a lot of larger predators. They've adapted to life in total darkness, with big eyes to help them detect the slightest bit of light. So sure, they're small and pretty fragile looking, but they're one of the most successful species in the midnight zone, found in large numbers across the globe. They may not be as frightening as some of the other creatures lurking in the depths, but their ability to survive in total darkness and extreme pressure is pretty impressive. Slow 
Cologne's viperfish is a predatory fish that lives in the depths of the ocean, often found at depths between 500 and 2,000 meters or 1,600 to 6,500 feet. It has long, needle-like teeth that are so large they don't even fit in its mouth. When it's closed, anyway. That jaw is capable of stretching to accommodate those oversized teeth, which it uses to catch and hold on to its prey before swallowing them whole. The viperfish also has bioluminescence with glowing photophores along its body that help it to attract its prey. Those needle-like teeth paired with those glowing body make it one of the most fearsome looking creatures in the midnight zone. But although they look frightening, they're also a relatively small fish, usually only around 30 centimeters long. But with all that said, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.